Hello. Hello. <laughs> Sorry about this. I'm trying to log into my own chat so I can see what y'all are doing. Wow, 20 people here already. Hi, Nancy. Good to see you. I'm glad you finally made it on. All right. Well, here everybody is. How are you guys today? It has been a crazy weekend. <laughs> I had four of my six grandchildren here from Thursday to Saturday with my daughter's um, 16th wedding anniversary and um, we had a great time but wow 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 <laughs> I'm tired <laughs> so what are you all up to this weekend hi Kay nice to see you 110 aye, aye, aye. there's no getting cool even inside when it's like that hi Lynn nice to see you from New Zealand <laughs> Yeah, I'm so sorry. I try so hard to find times that'll work for everybody. Um, if there is a time that you think would be good, um, you know, maybe we can move it so it's good for you once in a while. Um, I am not opposed to moving the time around to accommodate more people. So um, if everybody just kind of lets me know what works and what doesn't, I try to do what works for most people. Um, and but I don't always have to have it at the same time either. So uh, if a different time would work for you, maybe once a month or something, we can change it so that it's more convenient for you. Oh, let's see. I love your name, Sewing Brat. That's me too. <laughs> Hi, Tracy. What is a sewing bee? <laughs> a sewing bee back in the olden days is where women would get together and sew and chat. So. Um, that's why I'm kind of calling it that also because my mom um, had a thing about bees um, so and I'm Dorothy's daughter so it just kind of flows together um, hi Anna nice to see you uh, let's see Brenda nice to see you too Nancy you bought fabrics from joy <laughs> Wow, she had a lot of stuff, didn't she? <laughs> I've been watching. I hadn't seen her for a little while, and then I was watching her the other day. What an undertaking, moving all that stuff. Um, she has more. I always thought, how do you have two completely decked out sewing rooms? She must have a lot of stuff, but um, she is uh, fun to watch. I like, I like Joy. What kind of goodies did you get from Joy, Nancy? What kind of fabrics? Hi, Brenda. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate your kind words. Hi, Sarah. Nice to see you. We have a couple people from overseas today. Sarah's in the UK. And uh, let's see. Uh, which one, who was from? Lynn was from the New Zealand. Oh, no problem. Uh, I, Tracy, I... Um, I suppose I probably should have named it something different for the lives because of the Great British Sewing Bee being, you know, now, and I'm not trying to play off of that at all. I wasn't even thinking about that, but um, it does, uh, it does kind of, I don't know, work 
because of my, my mom used to wear a bee pin and I've told this story before, but um, if you've never heard it, um, she wore a bee pin to show that God could, you could do anything with God. She was an amputee and was told she'd never walk again. And um, she not only walked, she danced. And so um, she wore a bee pin to sort of show that she could defy the odds with God's help. And um, so it's become a thing between my daughter and my daughter-in-law and I. We have her bee pin and we pass it around based on who's having a hard time at the moment. So we uh, really have um, come to that little piece, that little, it was a cheap little pin but it's just become very treasured for us. And so anytime, anytime there's something to do with bees, I always kind of gravitate toward that. Hi Rhonda, good to see you. Oh yeah, so did you, do you know Joy? Like are you in, um, in the same town as Joy? Um, she, she's really sweet, she's so fun. Um, I tell you, she's like an open book. I think she kind of, you get what you get, you know? And um, I wish I could maybe be a little bit more like that. I'm, you know, tend to sort of get reserved when it comes to some topics, but she's just, she's just all out there and I, I love her for it, I really do. That's true, we did refer to sewing bees way before the Great British Sewing Bee. Um, and that's where they got the name sewing bee for for the Great British Sewing Bees. Back in the day, women who used to, you know, make all of their clothing and bedding and quilts, they would all gather and just sew together. So, and that's kind of what we're doing, right? We're all together just hanging out. Some some people might be sewing while they're doing it. Um, I, I find it hard to sew because I want to read what you're saying to me, but um, some people can. Oh, let's you remembered in time. <laughs> yeah, nice to see you, Dottie. Aww. So you're fairly close to her, Nancy. That's cool. Alrighty, well, so what are y'all sewing today? Today I am working on the test version of the new, um, they're re-releasing the La Bella Donna. Um, for Love Notions, so I'm working on the um, final test version, um, sewing one up for their, um, you know, so they can see how it fits. And I'm working on another test for Ellie and Mac, for it's actually a man's thing. And let's see what else am I doing today. I'm finishing a jumpsuit that I made for my granddaughter. When they were here, I made them each something, and I still have to finish two of them because I mean it was just crazy but my um, granddaughter is 13 and she wanted I made her sister a romper for her birthday she wants a long jumpsuit so I made her a South Shore and she's 13 and she just like it only the kids South Shore only goes to 12 so I had to make her a extra extra small ladies that is the first time I've had to use a ladies program or a ladies pattern on something for my grandkids and oh what <laughs> that can't be possible <laughs> hi from Alabama good to see you um, we don't really have a set topic for today we're just gonna kind of hang out and talk about what we're sewing and if you guys have any questions about anything that you're sewing, I'll be happy to answer them for you. Rhonda, you're doing an LDT. I'm wearing an LDT today. Um, I, I made a, uh, I helped my other granddaughter make a, um, a little LDT. She cut it out the last time she was here and she sewed the sh uh, shoulder seams. So she, she finished the side seams and hemmed it and then I put the bangs on for her. Um, but I made her watch me so she knows, you know, the principle behind it and eventually she'll do it. But um, it's the first thing that she did from a pattern. So she did the whole thing except the bands. So I think that's pretty good for a 10 year old. Um, let's see. Sewing for community service, pillowcases, burp pads, lap quilts. Wow, that's awesome. Hats off to you for sure. 
Um, I um, almost, I feel selfish, but I'm sewing mostly for my family. But um, I have been doing a few masks here and there for people who need them. So, somebody wanted me to get in contact with Viv Mom for vintage patterns. I do not know how to contact her. I would love to gift her some of my vintage patterns because I think she's the size I used to be. Um, but I have no idea how to get in touch with her. Um, does anybody, if anybody has an email address for VivMom, can you um, send it my way? Because I'd really like to do that for her. I know she's taken some time off from her channel. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, I don't I don't follow her closely. I watch her videos, but um, she's not one of the ones that I like. Don't ever miss kind of thing. Um, she's very good. At nothing. It's just that you can't. You know, you just can't watch them all, all the time. And um, I really like her a lot. And she's a fellow homeschool mom. And um, if she's going through something, maybe it would brighten her day to get a few vintage patterns. So if anybody has a an email address or something so that I can get contact her and get those to her. That would be wonderful. Thank you, Rebecca. I appreciate that. I didn't see anything, um, on, Tracy, on her channel that uh, I didn't see an, an email address or anything. I think she's on Instagram, so maybe I'll try to direct message her on Instagram. Um, if she's checking it, I mean, if she's taking time off, she might not even be checking anything. Um, but I can try. Maybe I can direct message. I think probably Joy Bernhardt would know how. But Joy, I'm sure, gets like thousands of messages. And um, I, you know, don't know if she would actually see it. Yeah. Thank you, Soul Libra. That's what I just thought of. I think probably could do that. Um, hi, Teresa. Good to see you here today, too. Hi, Beck. Uh, Becky, right? Nice to see you. I think last time I called you Aunt B. It's Be and then when I went to subscribe to your channel, I realized that you were Becky. <laughs> so nice to see you, Becky. Um, watching and listening while you paint walls. Wow. <laughs> Want to come paint mine? My hubby is um, putting together another pegboard for me. I'm going to do an update of my sewing room soon because uh, it's, you know, update a video because I've changed a lot of things. Um, I put this table in and um, moved my other table over. And there's going to be a pegboard over there, half the size of the other one that I have. And then um, I got some new racks for cone thread and um, it's just really functional. So I'm reorganizing things and it's probably time to do a major update of the video walkthrough. So, um, but he's doing the pegboard first. And then I want to redecorate. I have a lot of Mickey Mouse stuff in here. I kind of want to redecorate with some vintage patterns because I do have a lot of them. And it would be really neat, I think, to put some on the walls in here. So, especially some of the things that I have made, you know, like, um, a uh, my son's christening outfit and that kind of thing. I think I'll put them on the walls. <laughs> Laundry day tea. <laughs> that is, seems to be like everybody's go-to. Nancy's doing uh, closet case jeans patterns. Um, oh, I see. She must have asked. I'm behind. Sorry, ladies. Oh, you asked what LDT was. Laundry day tea. Hi, Mary Alice. Nice to see you. Let me ask you guys who are in Florida. Is it really as bad with COVID as they're saying on the news? Um, my son and his wife are going to Tampa at the end of this week, and I'm a little concerned about that. Um, what exactly is going on down there as far as um, COVID? Her parents live down there, so it's not like they would have to stay in a hotel or anything. But, um, yeah, just kind of nervous about them going to an area that has so many cases. Um, let me know what you think. Not that they're going to follow my advice anyway, because they're adults. But 
I'm just a mom, you know, moms will be moms no matter how old their kids are. Hi Sarah, you're in Virginia, glad you can make it. Oh, wonderful idea, leaving my information with Fabric Mart. That is a great idea. Um, maybe they could contact her for me. I just want to, I just want to get them to her. I, you know, I just, I don't want to sell them or anything. I just want to, you know, find 10 or 12 patterns out of my stash and just send them to her. So, um, yeah, I, I hope for, hope, I hope I can get an address. Um, she's a, I think probably we were homeschooling at the same time because <laughs> she's about my age, I think. And her kids are all old and grown like mine are. Hi, Cornelia. I actually am not Dorothy. I am Kim. Dorothy was my mom, hence the name Dorothy's daughter. But I get called Dorothy a lot. And I don't mind because she was amazing. So, um, But my name is Kim. <laughs> yeah, I know. We just, uh, we just never stop worrying about our kids. My son works. He's an essential worker in um, a warehouse for Home Depot. So he's had to work this whole time. And Home Depot has been amazing for them. I mean, they have taken every safe precaution that is out there. And they are giving them bonuses if they don't miss work and things like that. Extra vacation time if they need it. And um, they've been fantastic through this pandemic. So. Um, you know, I've been sort of worried about him all along, you know, so, um, but he's, he's doing fine and, um, I sh probably should quit worrying and just let him make his own mind up about his vacation <laughs> and be happy that she gets to see her parents because she doesn't get to see them very often. You're in Sugarland. Oh my goodness. I lived in Conroe. So old stomping grounds. Um, I heard it is bad. My brother's in San Antonio and he said it's terrible there. And people are. They're just going on about their business like nothing ever happened. And that's just, I don't know, it's just so dangerous. I could get on a soapbox, but I won't because I don't know how you all feel about it. But I will just say that if you look back on what our parents had to do during World War II for the greater good, asking you to put a little piece of fabric in front of your face is pretty small compared to what they had to do. Just saying. Hot Southern Iowa. Nice to see you, Helen. Thanks for uh, stopping in. Oh, thank you, Cornelia. Uh, you don't need to apologize because, like I said, she was amazing. And um, I named my channel after her. One, because she taught me to sew, and also because any way that I can honor her, um, she was amazing. Hi, Gloria. Nice to see you. Upland, K hey, my sister used to live in Upland, California. Um, I knew that looked familiar, and I'm like, oh, yeah, Margaret. My sister Margaret lived in California, um, in Upland, 8641. I'm going to have to look that one up. I love linen. It's like my new favorite fabric. I didn't ever sew linen hardly before. It's just so cool and comfortable. It wrinkles bad, though, but if you can put up with the wrinkles, it's, it's really nice. I think what it is about the wrinkles is that, you know, you just have to, like, not worry about them. You're not going to keep it ironed and crisp and everything because it's not really meant to be that way. But I think I used to try to like keep it ironed. And then as soon as I sat down, I would get disappointed. <laughs> so I, I love linen now because it's just so comfortable. Yeah, I, I, Sarah, I have not done that yet. I've not made a matching mask, but I, I think I'm going to because it's so, it's awesome to be able to do that in the viewer makes. Um, one of the ladies had done that and it's such a neat thing to do that. And I also would like to just have some plain white ones, you know, just so that they don't take away from whatever the outfit. I, I know, isn't that silly? 
Um, but, you know, I, you know, I barely go out anyway. So I get dressed the most for you guys because I don't go anywhere except to go record for our worship um, every week. So um, embrace the wrinkles. You got that right, <laughs> Becca. Anyway, so is there, have you seen any of the new patterns out? Um, trying to think of, uh, Helen's Closet has a new Gilbert top this week. Did anybody see that one? I think it looks really good. Um, Rebecca Page had a new dress out that has like a low, really low back to it. It looks pretty, but I think um, it's a little too low back there for me. Um, there have been a number of really nice new patterns this, this week. Um, I am also going to be working on the swim trunks for my husband, finally, five out of four. Um, the sherry dress that Karina and I are going to do a, a collaboration review of that one. And um, and I have the, the fit test that I'm doing for Ellie and Mac and the fit test that I'm doing for Love Notions. I've been pretty busy. Um, and then I told my um, kids I'd make a few things for the kids. So, yeah, busy. <laughs> yeah, that was an amazing deal. Um, I love that store. I wish if I lived close to it, I'd be in trouble. Two hours away is just right. Then it's an event to go. <laughs> Hi, sorry. Welcome. You're in Finland. How beautiful. Um, uh, everything I've ever seen from Finland is that it's a beautiful place. Um, do you see the northern lights there? Because I'd be so inspired, like just from a creative standpoint. Um, it really fosters your creativity when you, you know, just are around beauty all the time. And I just, that's what I think of when I think of Finland. I think of just beautiful. Oh, hi, Pat. I always started at a little bit before 3. I get on usually about 10 till, you know, try to start getting it set up so that um, all my testing things, you guys. And then I realized later that those testing things all end up in the permanent video. I should take time and go back and trim them, but I don't. But, um, you know, my, my little, you know, snapping my fingers to make sure that the sound's okay and and, um, you know, my face and turning the camera around and stuff. So I apologize for that. I, like, didn't even realize that that was going into the videos that stay online. So anyway. <laughs> I love my new machines, Paula. They are fantastic. I'm going to do a review. I just want to work with them a little bit more. Um, I ran this thing... Through, um, or I ran eight, eight layers of interface canvas, canvas, eight layers of interface canvas through this machine the other day. So, and it went through it like butter. So this is amazing, um, amazing. And one day I'm going to do a review and I'm going to show you some of the things that it does. It does a lot more than what I need, but um, the more that I'm kind of playing with it, I, I realize, you know, yeah, I kind of do need that, you know, so, um, and I like that you can customize the, you know, and save what you want the default to be. Um, it's really great. I love it so much. Um, and every genome I've ever had has been a workhorse and this is no exception. It's wonderful. I'm glad I could amuse you, Helen. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, well. I, but you know what? It's live, so it is what it is. <laughs> You're working on Quick Sew 3106. Uh, ooh, I love seersucker in the summer. So pretty. Is, your, is it your mom's birthday, or are you just doing the just because thing? That's so sweet. Yeah, we have a really nice day today, too. I'm in Toledo, Ohio. 
uh, Perrysburg, but Toledo is the closest big city, and it is sunny and low 80s. So you can't get much better than that, really. Yeah. You're in South Finland. Okay. Hi, Carol. Nice to see you, too. Wow, we got a lot of nice, a uh, lot of people in here that I haven't seen for a while. Yeah, you know, the, I was between this one and the... Horizon 9450, which is quite a bit more money. Um, this is like the top of the Skyline. Well, no, it's it's actually one down from the top of the Skyline series. The only difference in the nine is that it is uh, it has embroidery as well. But um, the Memory Craft series is another notch up in price, and the features were just not enough different really to end up having to, because I'd have to save a little longer to afford that one. Um, this one is does everything that I need it to do, and I'm very happy with it. Oh, that's good. I really love, I, I love these kind of days when it's just, it's just nice, and it's Sunday, and um, everybody's out either mowing their yard or walking around the neighborhood. It's just great. I have my view of the neighborhood right here in my sewing room. I sit here at my sewing machine and I can see what everybody's doing. I'm like the snoop of the neighborhood. <laughs> Hi Bernice, nice to see you. Thanks for joining in. Um, feel free to, if you have any questions or anything, this is a sewing chat. We're just kind of chatting in general right now, but um, we definitely, um, I definitely would love to take your questions and answer anything that I can for you, for sure. Hi, Adrian. Nice to see you. What, uh, oh, Christmas already? Man, you are good. <laughs> That's amazing. What, uh, what kind of quilt? What is it? Is it themed or just a nice quilt for him? Um, we did, did I ever, I think I did a video on it, my rock and roll quilt. Um, where I put album covers on. Uh, it was one of my uh, Vlogmas things last year. And um, I put all the classic rock album covers on this quilt. And yeah, it's pretty cool. And we, it's for our music room. So um, it's for my husband, but it was really for both of us because we're both sort of music geeks. But <laughs> Stuck in the 70s, what can I say? <laughs> Camino Dell. I'd love to see it. You'll have to send me a picture of it when you get it done. Do you know me, Memory, me memory Craft 7000? Huh. My, um, my first good sewing machine. I bought a sewing machine when I was in high school. Saved my babysitting money. And I bought a Sears Kenmore. And it was the old kind with the cams and everything. But it was a fantastic machine. And um, I had that until I got married. And then I was sewing for my babies and sewing a lot. And my husband bought me a Viking. At that time, I don't know what the model number was. This is in the early 80s. And I had this Viking, it was like the top of the line, it was computerized, it had every stitch in the book, and oh, I just loved that machine. And then it um, got fried in um, a, a power surge. So I didn't want anything to do with computerized for a little while there. So I went and I got a, a Janome Combi DX, which is completely like a heavy duty workhorse. The cool thing about it is it has a serger on the other side, um, which I never really used because it was only a two-thread serger. And as you know, that's kind of useless except for overcasting seams. Um, but it was good for that, and um, it was a great uh, it was a great machine. I still have that, and when I need to have two machines going, that's the one I get out and put um, top stitching thread in it and go back and forth. So.
You miss the sunshine. Aww. Yeah. It's it goes in spurts, you know, but because in here it can it can be forty degrees in August here easily. Or, you know, it's normally not, but you know like the, the joke with Toledo is that you just blink and it'll change and that's very true. <laughs> Camino del Rey commemorates the Spanish Franciscan passings along the coast of California. Oh, how cool. That's really cool. So Libra had a Sears Kenmore as well. <laughs> yeah. Mine was back in the 70s. It was like probably 73 when I bought it. Probably 1973-ish. Um, I never got a Bermina, um, but my friends did and I was very jealous for a while. <laughs> um, very good machines. All the, you know, all those top brands are all really good machines. I think it's just, it's kind of like, you know, when I was in photography, it was the Canon versus Nikon thing. And you know what, they both make great cameras. It's just what you started with, you know, whatever you start with, you just tend to, tends to be your, your brand, you know. So, um, I, after I bought that you know, first Janome, I never wanted anything else. So, um, I, I really didn't even look at anything else after that. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, not passing missions. That makes more sense, actually. <laughs> You have a conversation about whether they're going to do them or not. That's funny. My Kenmore didn't fry. The Viking fried. And it was just fried. So I, it, it, was, it was covered by my house insurance because it was a, a uh, power surge. So it was covered by my house insurance. But when I went to replace it, I, I did not get another computerized machine. So... Um, that was right when they were first starting to come out. Um, and I think, you know, they're much more stable now. Um, but I'll never forget it. I was sewing Halloween costumes when it happened. And, you know, I had just shut it down and went to cook dinner and resumed sewing after dinner. And I was, it wouldn't sew a straight stitch. It was like sewing flowers and, you know, all the, all the patterns. And I'm trying to sew this yellow crayon costume together and it all it will do is flowers you know but it was like Halloween the next day and I had to get them done so um, so my son's um, Halloween outfit was sewn together with seams of flowers <laughs> but um, I had to you know I didn't want to go through that again so yeah I think Juki is amazing too I agree with you would you ever sew stretch knits using an overlocker? Oh, all the time. All the time. Um, I hope I'm saying your name right. Gervais? Um, if I didn't say that right, please forgive me. I always sew my, uh, my serger. I always sew my knits on, on the serger um, when I can, um, except for like some top stitching and things like that. Um, but yeah, sometimes when I'm doing knits, I don't even touch the sewing machine. Um, but you don't have to have a serger to do knits, but it is very helpful because the serger, the serger seam, um, stretches. So when you can put a stretch seam into stretch garment, that's the best thing. So, uh, and I have a really, you know, really good serger that does it, you, but you really need it to be a, at least a three thread, preferably a four thread, um, stitch on your overlocker in order for it to be secure enough to be an actual seam that you don't have to sew again with the, your sewing machine. Um, if you don't have four threads, I would recommend sewing on the sewing machine and then overlocking um, because uh, it's just not stable enough with three threads. Aloha! You must be in Hawaii. We were talking about sewing machines, yeah, a little bit. Um, just everybody was saying what their first machine was. Okay. 
got your brother's sewing machine for Christmas, Irene. Welcome. Glad you're here. I have the, uh, my serger is Juki, my new one. I love it. <laughs> um, can you tell I'm in love with my new machines? They're amazing. And then I have a little um, cover stitch that is just that little inexpensive brother, but it works great. Low volume? Hmm. I'll try and talk louder. I didn't use my microphone today. That's probably why. Um, let me. Hmm. I'll just talk louder. I think I might just be internet troubles or something. Um, but yeah, I should have used my microphone, but it was it needed to be charged, um, and I hadn't charged it, so um, it would have gone out in the middle, and that's worse, I think. So I'll just try and talk louder. Is that a little better? Um, I love my new Juki Serger. It is fantastic. The air threading takes a little um, getting used to. Uh, there's little, you know, just like where does it come out? I'm always looking for the thread. Like I know it went there, but where do I grab it? That kind of thing. But it's really, it, it works really well. Oh good, I'm glad you can hear. Hi Dee, nice to see you here too. How did you like being a star in the video last week? <laughs> All your viewer makes. I had so many, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do a slideshow and um, just do it that way because there was just so, it would have ta it would have taken me like four videos to put them all in. So I didn't want to miss anybody and so I just decided to do one big slideshow. <laughs> Um, technically you would have to change your needles to, a uh, ballpoint for knits, um, but, you know, not, not every, not every serger has, uh, a, uh, ballpoint needle available. Um, I'm a little confused about overlock needles sometimes because um, some of them need a special needle and some of them don't. One of the things that drew me to the Juki that I have is that it takes a regular home sewing machine needle so I can put the right needles in there for the right fabric. Um, my Janome that I had before, I still have it, I just don't have it out, um, was just, it had took a special needle and um, they didn't really are classify them as ballpoint and it went through it went through knits just fine though um, but I don't know maybe somebody knows a little more about that um, but yes if you have the option to put in a ballpoint needle for knits I would definitely do it everything about it is easy yeah I it's threads like a dream it, it just feels like things that, that my other serger would have sort of grinding and like have trouble with. It would go through it, but it would just tell me about it, you know. This one just flies through. <laughs> um, so like, don't get your finger in the way, though. <laughs> I guess it'll just keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's what I have in mind now, too, Susan, is uh, Schmidt's needles. Thanks, Phyllis. Appreciate that. Um, that slideshow was a lot of fun to put together. It's amazing how talented this group of women is. Um, just like, we could change the world, girls. <laughs> One laundry day tea at a time. <laughs> Thank you. This is a laundry day tea, <laughs> speaking of. Um, I made this probably four years ago or so. Uh, been a little while, had it, but it's still one of my favorites. My granddaughter has a, a dress out of this fabric too, and we like to wear them together.
You, oh, wow, you've got a nice selection of machines. I, I'm Grammy too, by the way. Um, my grandkids call me Grammy too. <laughs> So what do you guys want to see coming up um, after, I actually filmed a video on Thursday, my grandkids were here and I haven't been able to get it completely edited yet, hoping to put it on later tonight or maybe tomorrow morning, but it is um, top 10, another top 10, but this time it is gifts to sew for kids and um, it was a lot of, there's a lot of fun things in there and I will be putting that online as well so um, I'm still waiting on some finished pant pictures from people to do that little sort of wrap up of the pants thing and I'm working on the bodice um, fitting sort of workshop that I'm going to do um, looking for a pattern that I want to use and um, you can use it or use your own it doesn't matter but I want to Pick one that has a really nice um, bodice that you know I can show the adjustments on. And um, let's see what else is coming up. The sherry top review. Um, I'll be doing. Um, I'll be guest vlogging for Love Notions uh, in a couple weeks, and so you'll be looking out for that. I hope that y'all will follow me over there for. A video and support that. Um, let's see what else is going on. Yeah, I'm open to suggestions always on topics, and um, people are loving the top ten things. So I've kind of, you know, um, oh, I'm working on sewing a bunch of camis so I can do kind of a wrap up. Um, right now, I'm working on the Webster from Cashmerette. My very first cashmere pattern. I have not ever made a cashmere pattern. And so, so far, I really like it. I haven't, all I've done is download the pattern and start putting it together. But um, I don't know why I haven't made them before. So, my first intro to their patterns. The material of the dress. This this thread, or this is a top actually, this is double brush poly, if this is what you mean. Um, if you're talking about the one on the mannequin, it's a top as well that is um, cotton lycra 95.5. Uh, let's see. T changing the world one stitch at a time. We should make that our tagline, shouldn't we? Let's turn this world into a happier place. That's what I want to do. Um, it's such a not happy place right now for people and I just uh, just want it to be happier. Top 10 gifts, Christmas is coming, yep, yep. That's, so I'm doing the top 10 gifts for kids and probably do men and um, maybe teens. That would be a feat if I can find 10 things <laughs> that teens want. Oh, it would be very easy to, to make shorts. Um, you would just want to find the length, and if you want them tapered at all, um, just go ahead and like sort of um, add whatever ease that you want and then taper them down to that uh, level, and, and you can make shorts no problem at all. You can't just cut them off, or you might end up with them a little bit too baggy, unless you like them that way, of course. But if you want them to be sort of tapered shorts, um, you know, you can you can cut them off and then, you know, taper that down to the way that you'd like it to fit around the thigh. Seven-year-old grandson asked me to make him a white muscle shirt, white so he can color on it. Oh, how fun. That is cool. You know they have um, they have washable markers, and you can get. So I've done this before for my grandkids. Gave them a, a top they could color by cutting the um, vinyl on my silhouette, 
just a, a vinyl outline of something and then they can color it and wear it and then when they wash it, since it's washable markers, it'll wash out and they can do it again. So that's, some, that's something that would be, actually I should have put that in like gifts for kids because that would be a great gift for kids right there. Let's see, seven year old, oh, okay, we got that. Hi Helen, candies. I don't know, you know, I, I get what you mean because they have to fit so well. There's no, no fudging with a cami. It's got to fit just right. What suggestions do I have to best store patterns that I've printed out and taped? What I do is, um, well, if I've taped them and, and not cut them yet, um, and this is like a really short term thing, I will roll them up and just sort of lean them in the corner of this closet back here. Um, but after I cut them and I wanna save them, then I fold them up and I put them in like manila envelopes. And then I have a file cabinet that I, I file by designers. So um, I have like almost, you know, one whole drawer of Ellie and Mac and um, just patterns for pirates and I mean, I've got one drawer that's simplicity, one drawer that's butterick, you know, and so it works out pretty well um, to store them that way. There are some, you know, folding them leaves some wrinkles in the pattern, but if you're really careful, you can iron paper, um, just a really low iron, but um, for the most part, if you use your waist, you can, you know, press them out with your hands. I buy them on Amazon, and they're they're pretty cheap. The ones I bought, they lasted me a really long time, um, and I got eight and a half by eleven. I, at first, I had nine by twelve, but they didn't fit in the file cabinet really well, so I got eight and a half by eleven. Is anybody as crazy as you? Probably. <laughs> you have a Singer Futura embroidering a Singer machine. A 1940s singer, a singer, <laughs> slantomatic. Wow, you've got some vintage things there. That's awesome. I have a vintage white downstairs that I've never touched. That was my husband's grandmother's. I should try and get it out. You want a featherweight. Oh, what do I like best about them? Okay, so the knee lever. So when you're sewing, you can, um, so when you're sewing along, you, you can use the, so if you're, if you're sewing and then you want to raise the presser foot, you don't have to move your hands at all. You can do it with your knee and pivot or whatever and then lower it. It also has auto pivot, which means every time you stop that it goes up. Um, that's probably my favorite thing. Um, and I know that's pretty basic to most higher end machines, but I never had that before. And I was sewing on a machine where the presser foot was broken and wouldn't stay up. So this is like heaven to me. <laughs> um, I also love the automatic cutting. That's awesome. Um, I love the alphabet. I didn't think I'd use it, but I have been uh, using it to label clothes mostly. Um, the grandkids got a big kick out of it. And I just love that it's pretty organized with the stitches and everything. Um, it goes through anything that I can put it through. It also, I, the reason I bought this particular model was because of the AccuFeed which I don't have that foot on now, but it's like a walking foot that doesn't behave like a walking foot. Um, I sort of hate walking feet. Um, but this one, I always feel like I can't see. But this one is really wide. I don't know if you can see that. It's really wide open and you can see
So this is really nice because I get the benefit of it without that clunkiness. There's a lot of things. I'm discovering things every day that I love about this machine. Oh, those Palisade pants look awesome. I've seen those, but last year I was tempted to make those. See-through envelopes, that's awesome. Volume's gone? Oh, that's weird. I wonder if we're having internet issues. Is it back on now? I don't know. I've been having some internet issues at my house lately, so it could be related to that. Sorry, guys. I don't really know what I can do to fix it. I'm so sorry. Good. I'm glad you can hear. So... Thank you. I, I got this uh, fabric in a um, knit the stash group on Facebook. There's a, a, a Facebook group just called knit D stash and people post like yardage that they have that they they're trying to clean out or whatever. And this piece was in there and I love it. I, I um, have made this and I made um, my granddaughter a little Bloomsbury dress from Little Lizard King and um, she likes being wearing hers at the same time as me. That thread cutter, it seems like such a little thing, but I'm such a messy sewist. Like, I don't, I try to take time to cut threads, but somehow I always end up with all these threads. That really cuts down on how many threads you have to clip, and it's, it's amazing how much time that saves. Thank you. I'm not a neat and organized person, so I don't know, but I love having this part of my life organized. Um, maybe it'll spill over into other areas. Yeah, I've never had this thread cutter on a machine before, and it, it really is nice. trying to see what oh storing patterns okay that was the last topic all right well um, so those are the things coming up for me and um, we will be starting probably fall sewing pretty soon it's you know it, I can't believe it but it'll soon be the end of July and back to school um, it's coming and Christmas is coming, <laughs> believe it or not. I'd really love to get my act together early this year. When do you all start your Christmas sewing? Let's, let's throw that out there. When do you start? I always say I'm going to start in like August and somehow I end up, I really don't start until probably October. That really needs to change. September. That's good. Hi, Anessa. Good to see you. Glad you could join us. You need warm clothes. <laughs> good. Oh, you are so right about the machine asking what the pattern is. That what the pattern says. <laughs> Christmas week. <laughs> I, um, I always worry that the kids are going to outgrow them, you know, if I start too soon. But that doesn't mean I can't start, like, the grown-ups stuff. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm always, like, behind what I think I can do. <laughs> Christmas week, I always end up having to ditch something. And I really would like to be able to complete every single thing that I started out to complete this year. <laughs> um, it's 
seems like I would abandon something along, along the way. <laughs> non clothes or adult clothes to start in September. You can't touch wool in warm weather. Yeah, I hear you. Um, now that I have my air conditioner repaired, I, I don't mind a little of that. Um, but yeah, it's a little hard. I really want more fabric that I can pull off to make things for my husband when he needs them. Um, I don't think I've sewn for him as much as I should have over the years. So I really want to be more, um, I really want to give him his wardrobe choices. Like, I want him to have the same advantages that I have when I go to the store and I see something, I love it, but I can't find it really in my size and blah, blah, blah. So I'd like to be able to do that for him as well. I mean, I can do it, just having the time is the problem. Yeah, I'm with you. I think kids' clothes you can't really do too far ahead. You can do toys and quilts and things like that. Um, in my um, top gifts for kids, you'll see I created um, princess dolls from Disney, and um, by just buying like the dolls at the at Michaels, and I cut their hair or style their hair. You can buy it like every sort of shade of person is there. You can find an African American doll, you can find a like a, a dark olive skin doll. There's a, you know, there's brown dolls um, that look Hispanic or Hawaiian or whatever. And there's, you know, Caucasian dolls and there's blondes and there's redheads. And, you know, so you can find like whatever you need to make whichever Disney princess you're talking about. And then just um, style their hair and then Disney has all those patterns so I think I made 13 of them one year for all the kids in my life they got a Disney doll and I mean I spent $15 on each one of them so like that was pretty good because if you buy a, an 18 inch doll from the Disney store they are pricey so ooh wonderful two sport coats for your hubby that's awesome Yeah, I should probably start planning now, Dee. Really, I agree with you. I used to go every year to the sewing expo in um, Novi, Michigan. And it's usually like one of the last weekends in September. And I would go there and stay three nights by myself. And I would sit in the hotel and sip coffee and I would plan out my entire Christmas and just get inspired by the workshops and I would plan everything out and come back and dig in. And that always used to work so well, but um, they quit having them there, and now I'm sure they won't have one. Um, well, they, well, they restarted it last year, but I couldn't go at that time. Um, now it's in November, which would be way too late to do my planning anyway. So um, I just need to get on the stick. I don't need to have a getaway to do that. I just need to do it. Ever since I was stopped doing that, I have not been good about getting my plan out early. <laughs> yeah, how, how is your move going, Anessa? Hopefully good. Do you like it in your new spot? <laughs> no matching thread. You know, I... So, do you ever... Am I the only one that sometimes just uses black, white, and gray thread? <laughs> um, I try to match, like on a serger, I, I try to match the, the leftmost um, thread, needle. <laughs> but um, I don't always, unless I'm top stitching, I don't always worry about matchy matchy, especially like the knits have a white like lining on them anyway so um, I don't know do you guys worry about I don't worry about it near as much as I used to <laughs> um, 
I know when I buy surgery thread, I tend to buy a lot of just white, black, and gray. Me, I love all of it. Um, knit tops are probably my favorite thing because they're so quick. Um, but then I love a challenge. I love to do jackets. That's another favorite. Um, I love to do jeans. Um, anything. I just love the process of seeing it come together. Bathing suits. I love to make bathing suits because you save so much money. And that feels really good. <laughs> going slowly. I'm so sorry. I hope you get it all put together and can feel settled soon. Is it better now, Alberta? Can you hear? Seems like it's going in and out, my sound. I don't know why that's doing that. I have no idea. I apologize. Um, I will. I will do I will make sure that the mic is charged next time. I never even used to use the mic, but um so I didn't think it would be bad, but I'm sorry about that. Okay. I will use my mic for sure next time. I apologize. Oh, that's cool, Susan. I bet he really appreciates that. That sounds like a mom thing, Barbara. <laughs> I will use the mic next time. I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, Good to see you too, Sarah. Neutral gray and black thread. Have you seen some people use like rainbow uh, variegated thread in their serger? I wondered about that too, because it it seems like a lot of people are um, going to that, and I, like they show the inside of a garment, and you can hardly tell that it's not matching. I have it. I make my bias tape. Is it is it hard to find? Maybe because of masks. Um, Brenda, you know what? The best way is to just do it because I think if you, I think if you just do it a couple times, you'll you'll probably realize it's not that hard. Um, it's different. But if you just, it's all about knowing when to stretch and when not to stretch. That's, that's really all there is to it. And as long as you, you know, keep in mind which way it stretches and when you should stretch and when you shouldn't. And most patterns are pretty good at telling you when you should and shouldn't. Um, I don't think you'll have any trouble. If you can sew wovens, you can sew knits. You know, I think we get stuck in here, you know. Um, people tell us that it's hard, so then we start to believe it, and it's really not that hard. I bought some at Joanne Fabrics, so I don't know, but I don't know what your equivalent. Does Minerva have it, maybe? Have you tried Minerva? Um, they seem to have a lot of notions at Minerva. I don't know. I haven't looked, but um, it is hard to find. I thought about calling Guterman and just buying, seeing if I could get like a wholesale box of it because it is hard to find. can overthink knits for sure. Good. Um, let's see. I 
am going to demonstrate that curved hem. A lot of people have asked me to show how I do the curved hem with the fusible thread. So I'll be showing that um, in an upcoming video. So, all right, well, you know what, guys? I feel bad about the sound and everything, and I will next time for sure use my mic. <laughs> it was about one quarter charged, and I was afraid it was gonna run out in the middle. But um, I had the kids here, and I forgot to plug it in. It's my fault. Um, but anyway, I hope that you have a fantastic Sunday. I think I'm gonna um, sign off and uh, get back to everybody. Get back to their day, and definitely send those viewer makes in. I want to make another fun slideshow like that um, soon. I'm gonna wait till I have you know at least five or six things and I'll do it that way because it was a lot of fun to put together that way. So send them in. And um, Gervais, thank you so much for coming. I really enjoyed um, you being here. If you're not in the Facebook group, feel free to sign up for it. We're all chatting a lot. Everybody's helping everybody in there. It's wonderful. And um, we're having a good time in there. It's a safe place too. Nobody's talking any politics. Nobody's talking any... We're just talking about sewing and it's fantastic. Um, hi, Laura. A jeans making adjustments. All right, that would be good. I actually did a jeans um, video, but it was more on fit. Um, but I could do a fly maybe, that kind of thing, top stitching. Um, that would be good. I'll put that on my list. Thank you, Brenda. I enjoy being with all of you. I always do. It's my favorite time of the week to get to sit and chat with you guys. And um, I feel so, I, this makes me feel so much more connected to you guys and what you want and what you need. And, um, you know, just, it's just good. So thank you so much for taking, giving your hour of time to me today. And, um, I will see you on the Facebook group and I'll see you in the videos and the comments and um, I hope to uh, have a few videos out for you this week and have a great Sunday. Take care.